Now listen carefully. But I am going to tell you something that no one ever said before me. No one ever said this before me. This is absolutely new information about Dajjal, about the Antichrist. What is it that is so important that it has come with the very last prophet? No one after him. What is it about Dajjal? that is so important that no one ever spoke of it before me. What is it? Do not treat the subject lightly. No. Take your time with it. The Jal sees with his left eye. He is blind in the right eye. It looks like a bulging grip. But your Lord is not one eye. Between his eyes on his forehead is written the word kafara, kafir. And every mu'min, mu'min is the one who has not only What's it around? The Mukmin is the one who has not only made the declaration of belief with the lips, Islam, but in addition, it has traveled until it has entered the heart. So now he has Iman, so he is Mu'min. Every mu'min would be able to read the word kafir. Whether he is katib or ghayru katib. Whether he is literate or illiterate. He can read and write or cannot read and write. This is what was saved until the last. And in this hadith, there is the key, the most important key of all for the study of Akhir zaman If you miss this one, you miss methodology. And you will end up joining ISIS and fighting a bogus jihad with Yankee money and weapons from NATO and with Karno Shaitan from Najd behind you supporting you. As you fought a bogus jihad in Libya, my words are bitter. Yes. And then you're fighting a bogus jihad in Syria. And now you're telling us, you're bringing us the Khilafah. So that CNN and Al Jazeera and television stations around the world can go to work to present Islam in the worst possible image. To show Islam as a menace to mankind so that Israel can wage the big war that Israel wants to wage while appearing to be a savior to mankind. If you 
miss this one and you adopt the wrong methodology, you end up with ISIS and supporting ISIS. So what is there in this hadith that he sees with the left eye but he's blind in the right eye? One day, the Dajjal will have to appear in human form. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, he would be a Jew. He would be a young man. He would be powerfully built. He'd have the curls of the Orthodox Jews. And he will stand up in Jerusalem and declare, I am Al Masih, the Messiah. When you study the subject, as we have been studying the subject, you know that day is not too far from now. I may not live to see it, but you will live to see it. <laughs> That's how close it is. But if you study the, use the wrong methodology, then when he stands up there in Jerusalem and he says, I am the Messiah, Al Masih. And we say, this is Dajjal. You will say, no, he cannot be Dajjal. Because he sees with two eyes. And the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, Dajjal sees with one eye. You are misled because you adopted the wrong methodology. That's why you end up supporting ISIS and the bogus Khilafah. What is the right methodology? How is it that the mu'min can read? Whether he is katib or ghayru katib, he can still read kafir. But Abu Jahal cannot read and George Bush cannot read. And this other one named Osama or Obama cannot read. <laughs> How come they can't read? How come the think tanks in Washington cannot read? But the one who has faith can read. Huh? Maybe we should send Abu Jahl to the eye specialist. Check out his eyes. How come he can't read? But the report comes back from the eye specialist that his eyes are okay. Still he cannot read. But this one can read. Will you not think before you support ISIS? Did Allah not send this Quran Likomi Yatafakkarun? Did Allah not send this Quran to a people who think? Why have we stopped thinking? Is it because that the one who has faith is not reading with these eyes alone? Is it that in addition to these eyes, we have other ways of seeing? This is called epistemology, the branch of knowledge with studies knowledge. They don't teach it in the universities anymore. 
how do we acquire knowledge? The scientific method is that knowledge comes from external observation and experimentation and rational inquiry. And the scientific method says, wrongly so, that if knowledge comes from any other source, it's not knowledge. It belongs to Disneyland. But the Quran says otherwise. How I wish the Quran could be studied. How I wish that the Quran could be taught in universities. We'd have a different world today if we would teach the Quran. The Quran tells us, for innaha la ta'amal absar. It's not these eyes which are blind. Walakin ta'amal kulubul latif sudur. What is blind is the heart which is inside the chest. So that the Quran gives us a different epistemology that we see with external sight and we also see with internal sight. And so now we can subject the hadith to something called ta'wil. Ta'wil. Tafsir is to explain. Ta'wil is to interpret. And we have to talk today about ta'wil. And when we talk on ta'wil, we go to the Quran, not to the hadith, to the Quran. So the one who has faith can read because he's seeing with the internal eye. And the one who is Abu Jahal cannot read because he is internally blind. And so now we can explain the hadith the way, excuse me, the Salafi cannot do it. I have not come to USM with boxing gloves to take on the Salafi. No. Mine is a learned and a respectful response to a challenge from the Salafi. And I expect that he would respond to me in like ways. <clears throat> the ta'wil or the interpretation is that when the Dajjal sees with the left eye, it symbolizes external sight, knowledge that is externally acquired. And when the jar is blind in the right eye, it symbolizes internal blindness. And all those who follow the jar will be internally blind. How then can we ensure? that we are not internally blind. The heart can see only when the heart has faith. And uh, you cannot fool Allah. وَعَلَّمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَحُولُ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَقَلْبِ Be conscious of the fact that Allah hovers between a man and his heart. Be conscious of the fact that Allah hovers 
between a man and his heart. So Allah knows whether this heart is worshipping him or worshipping the dunya. And that's why Surah al kahf gave us the story of the rich man and the poor man. The rich man worshipped his two gardens. With his lips he says, I worship Allah. But with his heart he worshipped his wealth. And he believed that because he was rich, he is superior. <laughs> so he is looking down at the poor. And the poor man is warning him, be careful. You should say, ma sha Allah, for what Allah has given to you. Because Allah can take it away from you. It's tomorrow, see what's going to happen to the United States. Just watch and wait and see. And Allah can give me better than what you have. And so said, so done. Allah withdrew the water and the gardens were all destroyed. And guess what he said, the rich man? Ya laytani lam ushrik bi rabbi ahada. Ya laytani lam ushrik bi rabbi ahada. Woe unto me that I have committed this act of shirk. With the lips you say you worship Allah, but the heart worships elsewhere. So Allah hovers between a man and his heart. And Allah knows whether or not this heart is faithful. When the heart is faithful to Allah and there is faith in the heart, then Allah will put noor in the heart. And when there is noor in the heart, then the heart can see. Without that noor in the heart, no scholarship, not even a PhD from Al-Azhar University, no scholarship, none, can penetrate in Mu'akhirul Zaman. Be warned about that. There are two kinds of verses in the Quran. Let us now turn to the serious part of this subject. There are two kinds of verses in the Quran. This is at the beginning of Surah to Ali Imran. Allah speaks about ayat muhkamat, verses which are plain and clear. You don't need any interpretation, plain and clear. And these are the Ummul Kitab, the very heart of the Quran is there. So you have no excuse. <laughs> you have no excuse. The heart of the Quran is plain and clear like daylight. But Allah in his wisdom, and Washington is very angry about it, very angry, that Allah should put into the Quran a second kind of verse. What is it? He calls it Ayat Mutashabihat. And we spoke briefly about it last night. What are Ayat Mutashabihat? Answer. These are verses of the Quran which have to be subjected to ta'wil, 
interpretation. Like the left eye and the right eye. <clears throat> and so Ta'wil is a part of methodology for study and understanding of the Quran. Ta'wil is an integral part of methodology for studying the Quran. Because you cannot understand and penetrate the ayat mutashabihat without ta'wil or interpretation. Now the, ver the words of the Quran came down with Jibra'il alayhi salam to the heart of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And he would then dictate and the scribes would record. And he would ask them to recite and he would confirm it's correct. But the punctuation did not come from above. <laughs> no. We put in the punctuation ourselves. Where do you put a full stop? It's very important. So somebody put a full stop. And that is the worst full stop in the whole history of full stops. <laughs> that when Allah says, no one knows the meaning of ayat mutashabihat except Allah, full stop. The worst full stop in the history of full stops is this one. No one knows the meaning of ayat mutashabihat except Allah, full stop. Because of that full stop, the implication is <laughs> that Allah sent down a book and appointed a teacher to teach the book. And the teacher knows only part of the book. And the other part the teacher does not know. Does that sound to you sensible or foolish? How come you're so quiet this morning? <laughs> Is Allah a wise God? How can a wise God send a book and appoint a teacher to teach the book and the teacher does not know the meaning of part of the book. That full stop is the most wicked full stop in the history of full stops. <laughs> so let us take it and throw it away. Unfortunately, the full stop is there. So we have to take it and throw it away. The full stop did not come with Jibra'il alayhi salam. What the Quran is saying is that no one knows the meaning of the ayat mutashabihat except Allah and rasikhuna fil ilm. Those who are serious scholars, firmly grounded in knowledge, not schoolboys. The schoolboy will say, no, he cannot be Dajjal because he sees with two eyes. That's the schoolboy. The one who is firmly grounded in knowledge, he is the one with Allah's guidance who will be able to penetrate this part of the Quran, the ayat mutashabihat. And ilmu akhir zaman is in ayat mutashabihat. So you cannot study this subject only with the rational faculty. Let me warn you. 
This is the most important branch of knowledge in Islam at this time. And you cannot study ayat, the ilm al zaman with only the rational faculty. You need more than that. Musa alayhi salam is in Sinai. And he gives a khutbah. And one of Banu Israel comes to him and says, what a fine khutbah. You must be the most learned man in the world. And Musa alayhi salam replies, and of course, it is not Musa who is speaking, no. Allah is using Musa to represent the people who follow him, who think that they are the chosen people of Allah. Heaven is reserved for them. They are the elite of mankind. They are the intellectual and spiritual leaders of mankind. And all the rest of mankind are like cockroaches. So he says, yes, I am the most learned of all men on behalf of his people. Does not recognize Allah as the most learned. And Allah says to him, no, you are not the most learned. There's one more learned than you are. He says, I want to meet him. And anyone who is humble, intellectually humble, not arrogant, would always want to meet the one who is more learned, to learn from him. So Allah says you will meet him at a particular place. You'll meet him at Majma'ul Bahrain. Majma'ul Bahrain. At the place where the two oceans meet. The one with the schoolboy methodology We'll think about Atlantic Ocean and Pacific Ocean. So maybe I should go to Table Mountains in Cape Town and then <laughs> I'll see the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. Now, Imam Baydawi is the only Mufassir of the Quran to have said no. You'll meet me, you will meet the most learned of all men. The man who is the scholar par excellence of Akhiru Zaman, the one with the proper methodology, you will meet him at Majma'ul Bahrain. You will meet him at the place where the two oceans meet. What are the two oceans? The answer the ocean of knowledge externally acquired and the ocean of knowledge internally received and when these two oceans of knowledge have been harmoniously integrated that is where you'll meet the most learned